This is Grounded Podcast with Echo Charles, Jason Gardner, and me, Jocko. What's happening? What's happening? Echo is trying to steer <laughs> this. Before we hit record, he's trying to take, uh, no. which is cool. You okay. A decentralized command. You want to talk about no, no, this no, no. thing? No, no, no. All good. All it's good. a good topic. <laughs> But the whole topic could be broken down much simpler than what you're saying. Here's the topic. Okay. Here's what you're essentially what you're talking about. Okay. You see, is it good? Uh, you see a coach yelling at a kid. Okay, let's just take that. This is from a Tom DeBlas jujitsu, by the way, mm -hmm. post picture of a guy, coach screaming at a kid. Right? That's it. Well, it's a no that's not it that's the okay. thing okay, okay. so go here ahead. it is go i'll ahead. clarify well the thing is here you could you can simplify it but you wouldn't be talking talking about the actual topic or should i say concept that i'm talking about okay what are you talking about okay so as me and jason were discussing okay tom de Blas, yes famous jujitsu person has a post on uh instagram that says the picture is it's like a meme picture, a picture mm -hmm. with words. So mm -hmm. this is what the picture has on it. Four pictures of uh, what looks like college football coaches yelling at a college player. Okay. Four pictures of it, right? Yep. Of different ones. Above that, in words, it says what champions consider coaching is what the entitled consider abuse. Parents, if your son is gonna be great, he will take some ass chewings along the way. Get ready. That's what the picture says. Okay. No, Tom, Tom, Tom's caption to the picture says similar to what the, what the caption says on the, on, the, on the top. Similar, but different. It says, sit a week in a pro training room before you ever say you want to be one of the best in the world at anything. You don't simply wake up with a gold medal, a huge business, and tons of money. You need to be able to take the heat. Most break before they even get started. Cool. Okay. Right on. So good. Okay. No. No. But what you were well uh, from what, what you were starting to say was that is it okay to yell at a player? Yeah. Yeah. I did is start it okay to say to that. I thought okay. that's what the topic was. Yeah. That's no. No. The, well, that is one of the elements in this comprehensive topic that I was talking to Jason about, and I kind of talked to you about it. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, what's your take on it, Jock? There's no further traffic needed. So you 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 don't like, have a take on it? No, okay. the take on it is, hey, the we, we, if I you're can't, I can't wake up and just be the best in the world or yeah. have a good business. Yeah, no, I, I don't see what the issue is, dude. Like seriously. Oh, okay, actually, no, 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 there was. Oh, yeah, that wasn't the issue. That wasn't the issue. The issue was in a whole. All right, I you know the reason I know this is because some um, someone made a comment. I forget the name or whatever that said that mentioned you and me in it. Okay. So, so yeah, so there, uh, and I forget what it said, but then, so then that's what made me sort of like analyze it in my own way. So I think everybody knows that if you're gonna excel at something, you're gonna need to get pushed. Yes. And also, if you're gonna be successful in life, you're gonna have to be able to face some stress and some challenges. Yes. So that means you're gonna get coached hard at some point. Now, can you? Can you go too far with it? Yes, you can. If you're an abusive coach that yells at people all the time, that's gonna be a problem. The people hate, the kids will hate the sport, they'll hate you, and they'll quit, which is not good. But if you're too soft on them, they won't be able to rise to the level needed in a challenging scenario. So basically, if you're yelling all the time, then- You're wrong. It, and, and you spent all your capital. Yeah. Yes, as a right. coach, yes. Because I can think of times playing sports where I got a good ass chewing and it's exactly what I needed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, that, that tends to work like if you're like a slacker. Okay, so let me, t I'll tell you a little quasi-story. I, was, I wasn't a slacker, but I was sometimes a slacker. You know the kind where like you've, you're good this enough? Is, you're, not, you're not giving us any new info <laughs> here, bro. This is like, you know, like okay, you, you can know, start the story. You know, whatever you know the like rest when of the you're story good is. enough to like be successful and then you, yeah. you know, and then you, no, you I maybe don't slack know. after that. No, anyway. I don't know. But I know someone that I work with actually that is just like that, but it's all good. <laughs> anyway. Especially so good. I was kind of like that in football. But so anytime the coach would yell at me like that, like fly off the handle for slacking, it would work. But if they'd fly off the handle, if like you're, you're, you know, you're doing something, you make a mistake, you drop the ball or you, you don't remember a play or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they yell at you, that never worked. It always worked against them. Cool. 
All right. There you go. Settled. Thanks, Jason. So we're up in your AO right now, Jason. Mm-hmm. It, when is it going to get cold, cold? Or is it already cold? Uh, we're in Spokane right now, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I'm, wa- I'm walking around Spokane. with my long underwear on, and that's what I'm wearing every day. It, it, it's going to get, I think, Monday night's going to be down to 20 degrees. And you already did one winter up here. Mm-hmm. Moved up here last December. Just digging it. Yes. Just it's digging so it. so great. Is, is it like... um? Are you ready to just be completely off the grid at this point? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we basically live right on the edge of, of the wilderness. Of the so, grid. <laughs> of the grid, yeah. We have electricity, but we're right on the edge of the wilderness, you know. I killed a mountain lion 80 yards from my front door last you January. What did you My 300 win mag. Oh, dang. How far was it? It was, well, the shot was a 200. So here's what happened. Uh-huh. There was a mountain lion that was hanging around the house, and we were out for a hike one afternoon and and saw this deer that literally all the hide had been ripped off its shoulder because it just escaped an attack by a mountain lion so uh i went and shot it and put it out of its misery and then um like a week later we saw a whole bunch of ravens and crows outside Mm -hmm. and found where the cat had killed another deer and they'll cache the kill and so it had taken it and hid it in some bushes Mm -hmm. and the crows had found it so we put a game camera up on the um on where to cache the, the kill and mm-hmm. it was in the woods like 80 yards from my front door wait the cache was yes or it's actually called the cash by the or way cash did you know that i got corrected or some i think his life got corrected on that by mm-hmm. someone at team three like it's not a cache it's a cash and we were like okay cool so I anyways exactly i'm correcting who, you now <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a cache it's a cash uh, even though it's spelled cache yeah all right, so, sorry. So, so it's ca- 80, the cache is 80 yards 80 from your house? yards from the front door. Uh-huh. And then um, we put the game camera on there. We see the cougar comes back, and, and all the photos are time, time stamped. Mm-hmm. So it's there feeding on the, the kill all night, and then it's looking around next morning. It leaves at the same time my kids walk down to get the school bus. <sighs> so, so Iris who's, you know, not really usually cool with shooting predators. She's like, yep, that cat's got to go. Went down to the sporting goods store. I bought a a cougar tag because it was in season. Okay. And then uh, went back up to the cache because they'll come back to the to the to the cash (laughs) (laughs) for uh, like a week at a time feeding on the kill. And so then I went went to it, looked around, found a good spot to the a spot with a clear shot 200 yards away and uh-huh. then went and set up a, a shooting shooting position and popped out there the next morning and drilled it right between the shoulder blades. Nice. And then we ate it. It was How fantastic. Big was it? Uh, it was about 130 pounds. Dang. Two, two years old is because what Because did you said. see that story in the news recently, maybe six months ago, where the guy, like, they were like, this guy killed a, a cat, but then they went, the cat was like 38 pounds or something. Yeah, it was a desperate, basically a big kitten. Yeah. And it would it was an adult cat, and, and that still messed him up. I know, that thing did. Because you, you, the thing that's weird, I think the, uh, the, the, um, the secret weapon of cats and dogs when it comes to fighting them is they have like, they can, they can move their spine way more than we can. Like they can, they're so flexible. Oh, they can bend it. Oh, they can bend it. So you think that you're, it's like this. You could you could be in their guard basically and they can turn around and start running oh, while right. you're in their guard yeah, yeah. and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So you can like try and pin them down and they'll turn like the back half of their body around mm-hmm. and attack you while they're running. So I think that's the real problem yeah. is the amount of flexibility that they have in their spine. Can and your dog do that? Yes. Yeah, yes. some dogs can't. It's do hard that for shit. me to hold my dog down. Yeah, and even like my son will try and pin my dog. Yeah, yeah. you know, and he has a hard time doing it. Yeah, yeah. Plus, they've got you know a handful of daggers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the cats for sure. Yeah, dogs, mm-hmm. the cats, much. dude. I mean, yeah. if that thing's coming after you, even the thirty-eight pound cat. No offense to the homes that that fought that thing off. I'm just saying it wasn't one hundred and thirty pounds because one hundred and thirty pounds, he probably wouldn't have been able would've to fight it off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that thing would. What about teeth? What's going on with the teeth? They've got big teeth. Are they gonna? <laughs> can they? Can they get your throat out? Can well, they get into your esophagus with one like? Ah. So, Iris watched one kill her dog that was a wolf chow, and she said it, it just hooked the dog, flipped it over, and bit it. It killed it like in three seconds flat. 
bit it right on the neck and, and snapped its spine. So I was hunting for elk, mm-hmm. and I'm with John Dudley. You know who John Dudley is? Yeah. Like one of the best uh, uh, hunters, bow hunters in the world. But where I'm behind him, I'm probably like, I don't know, eight yards, ten yards behind him. And we're, we're, we've been, we've been kind of stalking this, this group of elk and we're coming up over this little ridge line. And then, so then behind me is this other guy, it's our guide, this dude named Mort. And so, so Dudley's out front and then me and then Mort. And we've been, we've been on the trail for a while, like on this group. And then all of a sudden, like I see. Dudley, he gets super, super like amped. Like I can see it in his eyes. He's like, you know, he's like giving me the motion, like get up, get up here. And sure enough, in in between us and the elk that we were going after, uh-huh. there was a cat. There was a mountain lion stalking those elk. Yeah. And so Dudley like looks at Mort, our guide, and he's like, "There's a cat." And so Mort comes up. He's he's like, <laughs> Dudley goes. This is the exact quote from Dudley. Goes. Can I smoke it? <laughs> yeah, because he's thinking, you know, and it was kind of it was kind of weird too because we were we were on these elk and we were like closing the distance with them, I would say, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden they like left and we couldn't really figure out why, and then it became really obvious they smelled that damn that mountain that line. mountain lion. Yeah, and but yeah, you know what was cool? So as we're as we come, he didn't know we were there. The mountain mm-hmm. lion didn't know we were there, and he's stalking. Like we got to watch him, not for a long time, but for like a solid thirty seconds, yeah. maybe a, no, maybe maybe like two minutes. I don't know, somewhere between thirty seconds and two minutes. I guess it was thirty seconds, like initially, but then as we started, it was thirty seconds that we watched him, but then we started following him, and so it was like another minute of us following him. And Dudley wanted, since he couldn't kill it, he wanted to get it out of there. Yeah. So we needed to make some noise, and like Dudley, but he, he Dudley's trying. Not to make enough noise to scare the elk, but enough sure. noise to scare this cat. And so he goes, he's like, he like stands up and he's like kind of waving his arms a little bit. And then the cat finally looks back and Dudley goes like, <laughs> he makes like his own cat noise and it worked and the thing took off. But yeah, you could see the way that thing moved. If that thing decided to kill you, because that was, I don't know how big it was. I'm not, I'm not good enough to judge how big it was, but it was big. It was not small. It wasn't thirty-eight pounds. It was, I would say, it was at least, it was at least a hundred. It was at least as big as my dog. At least as big as my dog. Two deaths last year from mountain lions. There's one in Oregon and one up here in Washington. Mountain lions killing people. Yeah, I mean, a kid like your kids that are young, under the ages of ten, that's going to be a real problem. Yeah, because the, your your fear is is that. And and this is this is why we carry a gun with us everywhere we go. Mm-hmm. If they just a cat runs up, grabs your kid, it's not stopping. It's just got it him just and goes. it's gonna go. So, you know, your only option is to to shoot it. Um, but see the thing is that's you, why then you, I've got then dogs. you're making like a, a hostage shot, right? Yeah. This is a hostage scenario. Yeah, well what's your option? Yeah. No, I guess you don't have a very good option, yeah. but I'm just saying it's not like, hey, I'm just gonna shoot it. No, I gotta take a legitimate solid shot on a moving target right that's partly covered by my child's heart yeah that's a nightmare now bro. The, the thing <laughs> is is that that's why we have dogs yeah. you know yeah. and 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 it's like the targeting pit piece the dogs are the find and fix piece and i'm the finish mm-hmm. so we go jogging in the woods every morning and we both uh iris and i because it, it was that I, I was wearing a sidearm, but mm. then we, we split up when we get to run in a different paces. And she's like, we both got to carry guns. So we both run with 38s and then the dogs do. The dogs are, are awesome. Cause they're going to smell it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's crazy how good dogs can smell. Not to go down a rabbit hole of dogs, but dang, they can smell anything and they can hear, they know things yep. like, when my wife gets home, she my my dog, he he knows it's her. You know what I mean? Like, well, I'm I guarantee that he knows exactly the noise that your car makes. Oh yeah, and he probably can hear it coming a block away. That's crazy. So up here, are you still able to train jujitsu while you're up here? Yeah, we go up to Canada and train jujitsu up there at a place in Rosalind. What's it called? Uh, Kootenai BJJ. Kootenai BJJ. 
how how, how many like students are showing up uh, in every class? It, it, the adult class varies from six to fifteen, and and what about the children's classes? They're about the you know, there. There's more. There's more kids up there than adults, and so it's like ten to twelve. How are the kids liking it? They love it. We stop going for the summer mm -hmm. because when it's daylight out, it's hard to do it because we lose three hours going up there because Iris and I take the kids to the kids' class, help coach that one, then there's a teen class, then the adults' class. Ooh. And so, but in the wintertime, we're all about it. You still, do you do the three-hour session? Yeah, then we do the session. Th a three-hour model, and we just bring, like, you know, food for the kids and uh, their iPads or something. So when we're doing the adults' class and... The instructor up there is super cool. He'll let the kids part if they're up for it. They mm -hmm. can do the teen class as well because uh -huh. there's some smaller kids in the teen class that they can roll with. But um, most times my kids are spent after the the kids class. When you are training jujitsu, now that you're training jujitsu, how many times a week are you training it? Two, two times a week. Yeah. What do you like it? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At what point did you realize like this is legit? Well, I mean, when did you start training like a year ago something like that? I started up a year ago But the first time I did it and when I had that moment like it was magic is when um, who was the master chief back in Guam? That was Steve teaching Bailey. It. Yeah, and so That's the guy that got me into it right and I, I Wish I'd stuck with it, but I didn't but it was amazing because he would just sit in the middle of the class And there'd be 15 people there and he would go a minute with everybody and not break a sweat And yeah. somehow he's just on top of you the whole time and uh, I started training with him like I think three weeks before another guy in my platoon started. And the guy that started was really good at Taekwondo. He actually had like his own his dojo or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, the first class he came to, we were sparring. Yeah. And you had three weeks on him, which was enough to mean? Yeah, I... I, I Got him in a rear naked choke, For but sure. then I felt bad. I didn't want to choke him out. He's my friend, so I let him up, and Steve's like, oh, no, it's not over, and kept it going, and now he's embarrassed. Yeah. So he just drills me with a sidekick, and then I pulled him down, and I got him in another choke, and then I just choked him out. That was, yes, that's, that's the glory, the glory mm. days of jujitsu when no one knew anything. And that's yeah. pretty typical there, right there, when someone gets caught, and they get like mad and embarrassed, so they think, "Oh, if I just go harder, then like, well, I can, I can beat this guy trying to wrestle me or whatever." Right. And yeah, it doesn't work. That was the deal with all those Gracie in action videos back mm -hmm. in the day. Like, oh, he just thought he could go harder and win. But or can't. people would come in all greased up or have some other scheme. <laughs> I don't even know what they thought. Well, mm -hmm. you just can't believe it. That's the problem. Yeah. You just can't believe it. You cannot yeah. believe, like when Steve Bailey was like, okay, yeah, he just lined us up. It was like me, Jeff Higgs, and then like a couple other team guys. And he's just like, okay, you guys come and attack me. And he just, just, just crushed us. I mean, just, you know, arm lock, rear naked choke. And it was only like arm lock, rear naked choke. I don't think he actually knew the Kimura. The Kimura. I think he only knew the arm lock, the rear naked choke, and the Americana. Right, right. That's old mm -hmm. school. That's what he knew. And he's just worked us over because no one knew I think anything. We did guillotines too. I don't even remember learning the guillotine. I guess we, we must have learned the guillotine. Yeah, you had to have learned the guillotine. Yep. You can't see the moves if you don't recognize any. Like if you don't know it. And yeah. He, and it's like just like I said, he just, for some reason would just be on top of you the whole time. Yeah. And it's like yeah, he's a smaller guy. Just push him off. I'm bigger than you. Push him off. But then you sort of can't. And then you're like, oh. I don't even know why I really can't, so let me just go harder. Like, you just don't understand. You just don't get it. And, you know, whatever your instinct is, it's usually wrong. Yeah. yeah. And so. That's a messed up thing right there. And, it, yeah, because it's like that episode of Seinfeld where Costanza's doing the opposite of everything he's going to do. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. so when I started. Wait a second. <laughs> I haven't seen this episode. What's going on? C Costanza, the one kind of short, fat guy yeah, in Seinfeld, yeah, yeah. he yeah. just starts doing the opposite of everything, whatever his, his initial instinct is, <laughs> yeah. and then his life just starts going great. Yeah. He goes, I just do the opposite of what I want to do, and things are going great for him. That's and true so when I started doing jujitsu again, and I would be get stuck in this mind riot of, okay, right now, I want to put my arm here, 
but that's exactly what he wants me to do, so I don't want to put my mind there, and I'm just mm-hmm. overthinking it to death. Yeah, yeah. And what about Iris? How's she liking it? She loves it. Yeah. Is she putting moves together? Do you, you guys can train together. Yeah, a lot of times, because especially when we were training in San Diego, everybody was giants there yeah. for some reason, especially mm-hmm. in East County. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, it was the most realistic for the two of us to roll together. Mm. And, and do, you, do you have mats at your house yet? No, not yet. We'll but you're going to get them. Yeah. For, for like, you don't need that much either. But actually with the kids, you need a little bit more. Yeah, but we got that schoolhouse on our property, which will be perfect for it. That's so legit. Yeah. What else, Echo? Can you invest too much in the long term? Can you invest? I mean, I'm sure you can, but then too where? Too much. You, know? you mean like in the long game, Just in the long game? In war? the long game, yeah, in general. Uh, I'm sure. I mean, obviously, we know from from just our lives and from our basic fundamental principles that you can go too far in any direction, even directions that are considered to be good. So, yes, you can. You can absolutely invest too much in the long okay, term. Okay. So where? So where do you kind of draw the line? I guess you got to you got to think of a very like a specific circumstance. Right, to because that line would be drawn like further and okay. closer depending Here's on one. what it is. I'm gonna save my money for the future, yeah. which means I'm not buying food and I just starve to death. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, you know what I mean? That's yeah. like the as far as saving money goes, yeah. But okay, let's just go saving money like re, uh, like realistically. Obviously, okay. we're gonna buy food. So, so when you save money, you don't necessarily not spend your money. So that'd be yes, going too far. Well, maybe actually, in a specific, actually, no. What you just said is wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> when you save your money, I'm you saying, do not. No, spend. I'm saying pragmatically in the real world. I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm not saying the concept. All right, no, I get it. But no, Dude, I mean, this is like, a rough night for I'm, you, bro. Well, yeah. How long <laughs> you been awake for? <laughs> you you need some discipline. Go up in here, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, when you, when we are saving money, if you're saving money for something, you're saving money for, a, I don't know, a jacket or something, okay. right? <laughs> you're still buying food because yeah. you got to live to wear the jacket. You got to, right, that's right, okay. the, it, pragmatically, you're not going to starve yourself okay. in the name of saving money. Okay. Most of the time. Okay. Okay. So actually, I'm not even really necessarily, if you take it too far, it won't necessarily be in that direction. It'll be, oh, I'm saving money. Not for something specific, but I just want to be like frugal for the long game, right? Okay. So if you be too frugal, how can that kind of bite you? Not talking about starving yourself. (laughs) Short of starving yourself? Yeah. Yeah. So you go to buy a tool, right? Yeah. You go to Harbor Freight. You can get very inexpensive, a tool that works but the thing is gonna break in six months. Or you can go buy a more expensive tool that's gonna cost more money up front. Over the long haul, it's gonna be cheaper because you're only buying one instead of like the three or four Harbor Freight tools you would need. And so then, then you're looking at either playing the long game or the short game based on how much you invest up front. Right. So the it's same thing with cars, right? Kind of thing. Like, you know, you can buy a cheap car, but not reliable. You spend all this money on all yeah. this other stuff because of the car. Or you buy a more expensive, reliable, newer, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, it's car. got a, it's got a uh, um, warranty on it, basically. Yeah, kind of the same deal. Yeah. Right. So where's the, where's the line in saving money, though? The, the, the line is you have to just do the, the risk versus reward, the the cost versus ROI. I mean, what, it's what Jason just said. You can be like, okay, hey, there's some tools that if you're only going to use it one time, you know, every once in a while you got to go to Home Depot and buy some tool that's going to use, you're, you know you're going to use it yep. one time. You go to Harbor Freight. Yeah, then you go to Harbor Freight, get something that's going to get you through that particular job. Right. But if it's something that you're going to do repeatedly or you're going to need or that has broad applications, across a large spectrum of scenarios, mm. then perhaps invest. Like I have a really nice, uh, I have a really nice saw. Yeah. Yeah, sure. like yeah. a really nice saw. Like what, like a table saw or just a regular? Yeah, like a nice table saw. I, have a, yeah. I've, I've, I actually have pretty nice tools, cool. you know, cause tools like that, but there's a couple tools that I've achieved. You know the tool that you use to replace the screen in your screen door? Mm-hmm. Like if I worked as a door installer, I would have gotten the 
$32 version of that. It's like a wheel with metal and a bearing or something like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, I have the plastic one. Gotcha. The only doors that I'm fixing with a screen on them are mine. It costs four dollars. So there's an example. Yeah. There's, a, there's. I mean, you can use Excel to do a lot of this stuff, and I, that's something that this winter, when the days get shorter, I'm going to learn how to use Excel. Mm -hmm. I know a guy that that used. He looked at it in Excel, and he saw that it made more sense for him to lease a vehicle because he wasn't driving very far than it was to flat out buy it right. money wise. So good. Seldom that's the situation. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, like if you don't but, drive. I've but, heard that before. But there too, are though. scenarios that do. There are scenarios. Yeah, like if you don't drive. Scenario. Yep. Yeah, there are scenarios that that does happen. Even like renting and stuff. So okay, good. What about health wise? Like, um, and I, health is a broad one. Let's say diet. We'll say just just eating, right? Uh -huh. Your diet. You can clean up your diet. Can you focus too hard on the long term with diet? And what does that look like? I'm sure there's many ways. In fact, I can probably think uh, of a Okay, way. well, let's do it. Why are we trying to eat healthy? Yeah. To stay healthy, right? Yes. So let's say you know, what, what people aren't calculating into their health is their mental health. Yes. That actually plays a big role in your overall health. So if you are eating rice cakes and what else do you, people like that eat? They eat rice cakes <laughs> and like celery. Yeah. If they're yeah. eating rice cakes and celery, mm -hmm. And oh, that's cool. You're skinny, but you're depressed. That's yeah. going to be a problem. Yeah. So yes, you can go too far. Sometimes you got to have a mint chocolate chip milkshake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or whatever. Or what if your particular scenario has you sort of the head of household situation, and your dietary guidelines, or should I say rules? I guess in this case, are affecting your relationships in the household. Well, that'd be yeah, taking yeah, it too one far. Be taking yeah. too far again. I almost crossed that line once. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. believe that so for some my reason. My wife was like, you know, I was I was going a little bit too hardcore. This is back when I was still in the dames. And I was going a little too hardcore with, uh, you know, like keeping it clean and everything. And so I got home and I was, she had made like whatever, chicken or whatever and corn. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was like, I was like, seriously? Like I've been asking you not to like feed our children actual poison <laughs> and you're feeding them corn. And she's like, she goes, uh, she goes, it's a vegetable. And I go, it's a grain. <laughs> and she's like, she's like, what are you talking about? It's a grain. So yeah, there. Made you sleep on the couch. Yeah, she was like, she was like, Shut what up. are you talking about? She's looked at me like I was an idiot. You know, yeah. I was like, I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. It's fine. Well, so you almost, you didn't quite cross the yeah, line because yeah, you yeah. didn't damage the relationship. I was able to reel it back in. You yeah. Know? That's what I do. Yes. Or like when you're a little kid, you're saving, you say, I want to save my money. So you're saving your money, but not as much money as maybe your, your, your dad wanted you to. So your dad gives you shit about it every single time. Like anytime you spend a little bit of money, see what I'm saying? Then you don't li really like your dad anymore that much. Yeah. So like everything else, we know for a fact that if we take anything too far, even good stuff, it'll be a problem. Yes. Even playing the long game, which I kind of gathered was kind of the game. Yeah. Well, you can even no, be careful. No, wait, wait a minute. Journey before destination. Okay. Apply that. Yeah. So you, you, you have to be present in the moment, right? So if you're always focused on where you're trying to get and not the path to get there, then and you think that's, that's, that's more important. A balance again. Balance. I could dig it. But okay. I was surfing with Stoner. Uh -huh. We're literally surfing. It's a beautiful day. And we're out. It's me and him at my break by my house. It, yeah. it, it's, it's like a, just a beautiful Southern Cal California day. The water's warm. The sun is out. We skipped work, whatever. It's all good. And we're out there. And he's like, bro, like, like, how am I going to find happiness? Like, how am I going to get, how am I going to get happiness? And I was like, bro. <laughs> I'm like, this is it. Yeah. I'm like, this is it, man. Like, this is actual, this is it. Like, this is it. You don't have to go anywhere. This is it. And and it's the exact same thing that you're just talking about, Jason. Like, yeah. if, if he's sitting out there and instead of thinking like, it actually, life doesn't get any better than it is at this moment in time. We are surfing. The wave's good. There's no crowd. It's just, it's just awesome. Like, 
hey, and, and you know, he's over there thinking about work or about whatever, something else, or about how can I land this position or how can I uh, make more money or whatever, whatever crazy thoughts he was having, he was having them instead of just being out there going, you know what, this is awesome. And oh, I'm gonna catch another good wave. So yes, yeah. gotta pay attention to the, what'd you say? The journey, journey not just the destination. Journey before destination. What does that mean? Before destination. Because you're on it time now. It's uh, from a, a, a fantasy novel I was reading called Way of Kings and there was a thing in there that said journey before destination. Um, Strength before a couple other really squared away sayings. Let me look it up. Jeez, that strength before what? <laughs> man? You can't leave us hanging like that. Second, Actually, the journey. I will pull it up right now. I would have. We said we kind of agreed that it was balanced. This is with what, like thirty-five seconds of thinking about it. Where I think that yeah, the journey might be more important because look, all these little goals, right? I mean, uh, uh, there's exceptions for sure. But every time you reach like some goal that you have, short term, mm-hmm. whatever, even long term, mm-hmm. you're kind of like, cool. And then you reflect on, oh, remember all that? You know, you kind of, the, the, the goal doesn't really, it seems like anyway, mm-hmm. that the goal doesn't come with you for the rest of your life. Like, but everything you learned along the way sort of does, you Good know, point. and you can apply it to other little goals or whatever. And also, when you reach the destination, that like the luster of that sort of fades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm only happy at the destination for about point yeah, eight like seconds. That. And then, and then, and then I'm like, the next cool, one. Next. Yeah. The full yeah. thing is life before death, strength before weakness, journey before destination. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Well, the first two are pretty obvious in yep. my opinion, but the and think about think about when you have a bunch of goals, right? And you're like, no, the goals are more important. Let's just say, and you go. First goal, yes, I did it. Okay, next goal, look, I did it. Like these goals are important, but after you stack up twenty of those, dang, those goals were sort of part of that journey. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So they become the journey. So you I know, agree. it's like being a parent too. You're like waiting for your kids to get older, yeah, yeah. but then that's, that's every I'm, aspect I'm of their right. childhood yeah. is so awesome, and it's like, whoa, I need to really enjoy this day when they need me to read a book or, or every little aspect of parenting them. I need to slow down and be present in the moment and go, this is so cool. Yeah, because yeah. the, the, the uh, parenting thing, the kids, that they don't gradually uh, mature. It's like one day you're hanging out with your kids and everything's cool and you're their dad and then like the next day they're on their own program Mm -hmm. and and that's what you want right that's what you want you want them to be on their own program but yeah it's not like you don't get any warning sign yeah it's just one day you go oh one day you're like hey do you want to go you know want to go you know walk down to the tide pools Mm -hmm. what's wrong you liked it yesterday yeah and then they're like well no because i've got a friend coming over and you say oh okay i'll be over here by myself (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. yeah, bro, that's such a good, and you know, people say that a lot, right? Where it's like, hey, cherish those moments, and they say that a lot, but then they do. it's like, man, it's weird how we don't get it sometimes, because you can, and here's a little test you can do. So let's say you have a, in my case, a six-year-old and three-year-old. I mm-hmm. can look at videos or something like two years ago, and I'll be like, oh, where did that time go? And that was like two years. So what's going to be when they're like 20? Yeah, but and then, yeah, I know. Yeah, like, and you can do that like two months ago even. Like, oh, mm-hmm. remember that? Oh, I wish I would have just did more on that day, you know, kind of mm-hmm. thing. And man, if, yeah, if you can keep that in your mind. That it's crazy. helpful. Yeah, and that's just, just reinforcing that being the, be the present, being in the now. Yeah. Uh, Aiming I, at the future. Just balance again. Yeah, I think Sarah Armstrong put it really well. Uh, the days are long, but the years are short. Oh, yeah. Which is a good way of saying yeah. it, you yeah. know, because you get caught up in like, oh, I wish this kid would just go to bed. Mm-hmm. Like, uh-huh. You know, and like, no, actually, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 and for me, my experience has been that my kids, it was like all of a sudden they were adults. Yeah. At least they're all of a sudden they were yeah, yeah, adults, you know, which yeah. is cool. That's what I want. You know, mm-hmm. I want them to be. And then I guess maybe in your kid, because you spend a lot of time away, though, mm-hmm. in work and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So so you might have a maybe slightly different experience from, from someone who isn't necessarily. Were you, you're, 
you weren't away, right? <laughs> what do you mean? Like uh, how? But how old are your kids? Uh, eight and seven. Okay. So I guess. And, and when did you retire? You just retired. Just retired in May. Oh yeah. So okay, they so they've different. been through two deployments. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're a parent who's there all the time, I'm just saying that gradualness, they might have a little bit, it, it may oh, seem it a little seem bit more, more gradual. gradual. Yeah. yeah. That's not what I'm talking about, though. Mm. I'm not talking about how. Oh, when it hits you. I'm not talking about how yeah. when you, when you, uh, you know, oh, I haven't seen you in a year and yeah. you put on 40 pounds to your belly and I'm like, dang, what happened? Yeah, yeah, Whereas yeah. opposed to if I see you every day, I might not notice it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your kids will in a very short period of time, go from being uh, whatever it is, I guess dependent on you, yeah. to being independent. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That will happen very rapidly. Yeah. And it wasn't like, you know, I went away for six months and came home and went, wow, no. It, yeah. was like, it was like, oh, yesterday you wanted to go to the tide pools with me, yeah. mm -hmm. and today you wanna go to whatever, yeah. Jessica's house for a kickback. <laughs> <laughs> Did that really happen to you? Uh, the, the, word, the word kickback mm. certainly came into play. Well, what about the tide pool? Was it actually the, like, did you really in real life get rejected f from the tide pool scenario? Probably. I don't, I don't remember it. I think you did. Pretty romantic sounding, but. Well, that sounds like fun, something fun to do with your, your kids. Yeah, the tide pools are awesome. Yeah. The tide pools are awesome. There's creatures in there. You know, sure. <laughs> like yep. you can see awesome. octopus, dude. Yep. Bro, I know. I'm quite. Yeah. There's some good type. Yeah. In fact, that's what God, we do. I miss the type. <laughs> <in Kauai. laughs> but yes, I do. I know exactly what you mean now. Now that you mention it, because like it's almost like your mind is paying attention to these elements. One day. And then here's one. One day. In one day. In one day. That's the transition period. Your daughter. Your daughter. Your daughter is not gonna wanna hold your hand when you're walking down the street. She will do it on Tuesday. On yeah. Wednesday, she won't. Yeah. That's gonna happen. That's my fear. Damn. Yeah, that that's is gonna harsh. happen. All right. Yeah, no, I believe you. I yes. believe you, sir. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. There's no, that's not a, that's yeah. not any, that's a transition <laughs> that's gonna take place. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. It's gonna go from dependent to independent. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah and then, and it that seems like that could be actually two things. That could be two ways of that happening. One is stuff that's building in them, and then just one day they're like, wait, wait, wait I don't want to hold your hand anymore, mm -hmm. right? So it's like boom, just like that. Or it's another thing that 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 maybe one day they figure something out that is just you know that one thing you figure out that applies to so many other things. So now I'm a different person, kind of thing. Now yeah, I see things happen. totally different, you know. It could happen like that. And then when it hits you as dad, just sort of being dad, you're like, dang, you're like a different person. Your now. ability to influence them is huge when they're younger. And yep. then you got to figure out the trajectory you want to get them on because every day it's limited and limited. So, you know, when if you're trying to correct problems when they're 17 that you should have fixed <clears throat> when they were seven, yeah. you're messed up. Or I'll, I'll it, tell you one thing that I've noticed about my kids is – a ton of the influence that I had on my kids, it was seeds that were planted and uh -huh. that came to fruition later. Like I'm like I will say, wow, that you know, one of my kids will do something or say something and I'll know exactly where it came from, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen it I hadn't seen it before from yeah. them. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. It's like you see someone do a move in jujitsu that you you don't you didn't expect them to do and you go, but you know that they learned it from you. Yeah, yeah, you know you what I mean? It it's like one of those things. Mm -hmm. So I noticed that with my kids now that they're older, you know, I'll see my, one of them will huh. do something and I'll say, oh, I know exactly where they got that from and I know it's actually from me. Mm -hmm. But even if you were to ask them, it's like, the, it's like good leadership, right? Yeah. They don't yeah. even know where they got the idea from. They just know that that's the right thing to do or the way that it's good or whatever. Yeah. So, and I think if you try and cram those things down their throat, that's going to be a problem. No, them. the only way you can get them in there is with yep. just being Seeds. around. Um, my oldest boy is is like, I think he's about on his fourth week of Army boot camp, and he nice. had the opportunity to call me last Sunday, and he sounded so good. Yes. And it, so it's crazy. There's a Facebook page, and I can follow what his company, like every day they post what they're doing in boot camp. Dang. 
and they're doing like way better stuff than we did in Navy boot camp. Of course. They were out in the rifle range yesterday. They got gassed two weeks ago. I was like, hey, buddy, how'd you like that gas? He goes, oh, it's horrible. (laughs) Um, You know, medical skills, doing their radios, doing lots of good stuff. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, before he was going, I'm like, hey, there's like, they have a pretty badass credo too. Was like I, I am, I stand ready to deploy and engage with my nation's enemies and all this good stuff. Yeah. That when I was going through I Navy had. boot camp, they well, first of all, yeah, Navy boot camp is. It's just if different. you're going in to be a SEAL, Navy boot boot camp is not what you're looking for. Mm-mm. But what did I do? I wrote. You know what? You could write some kind of. You got to write notes or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I wrote like on one of the notes, like this brainwashing seems to be working well. <laughs> <laughs> and like then the guy all freaked out on me that my uh, my boot camp chief not not on me because he did, it was an anonymous. Yeah. Like you had to fill out like what are your thoughts on boot camp or something like that. Uh-huh. And I was like, being a cynical little asshole kid, you know, I'm like the brainwashing seems to be working well. <laughs> So, yeah. But whatever. if you come out of boot camp and like you're standing around and then automatically you're at parade rest or whatever. Exactly. The brainwashing yeah. seems to be working well. My mom's <laughs> like, are you folding your clothes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah mom. <Dude. laughs> I'm folding my clothes. Yeah, good. So pay attention to those kids. Yeah. Well, and how you can tell like that that is true is not only can you see your kids kind of doing stuff like, oh, I used to do that. Mm-hmm. Or maybe I don't even remember teaching them that, mm-hmm. but they do it just the way I do. Good and bad, by the way. Mm-hmm. Or, or and you can, like, do you have stuff that you do that your dad did? I'm not sure. Yeah. I've, do I've, you? Yeah. You got some BC? <laughs> yeah. I'll say stuff. Like, you know how you say stuff in, or when you're a kid and you're like, oh, I wouldn't say that. That's a dorky or some whatever. That's such a dad thing to say. And then when you uh, kind of grow up, you say it. Yeah. I, I, I know I do things that are considered to be dad things. Yeah. You know? But you can't trace it back. To- like, you know, my daughters were wearing shorts that were too short, <laughs> in my opinion, for mm-hmm. school. And so I was walking around our house with a pair of running shorts on with them hiked up my ass. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I what? The What's picture. wrong? I think What's like wrong? Is. I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't short. You know, like all the things that they were telling me. Uh-huh. They're not short, Dad. Neither are these. Let's go. I'll take you to school. <laughs> Get away from us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Did yeah. it work? Uh yeah, I'd say it worked all right. Yeah, I'd say it worked all right. Uh, worked pretty good. But you probably had like a tan line, you know, like the tan line. That's how you can tell the sh- the shorts are, are too short when there's a tan line. Mm, I don't even know. I think man. That's the guidelines. Check. Then again, or if your daughter's used to wearing short shorts and they're too short, you don't know it because you can't see the tan line because there is no tan line. So I guess that's a flawed, um, you know, theory flawed measurement. <laughs> flawed theory. logic. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Hey, man, I'm hungry. All right. Can we go get some food? Yes, sir. All right. Um, This is the Grounded Podcast. We have another podcast called Jocko Podcast. If you want to listen to that, we got the Warrior Kid Podcast. If you want to help us out, you can go to thejockostore.com or you can go to originmain.com and shop for stuff. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you later and stay grounded.